Time to think is dangerous when your brain likes to spiral. That time when you know something big is coming, but you also don't know how to think or feel about it. It's always easier in these situations to just bury yourself in work, keep busy, surround yourself with things to do, and that way there's no time to reflect, no need to be patient, and especially no time to worry. Maybe it's just the easy way out, or maybe it's a way to cope. Either way, one thing is true. It sure is effective. Ignoring something is far easier than addressing it. But is it really anything more than a crutch? Something easy to get you out of this situation? A way to avoid the actual issue? I don't think anybody really knows for sure. And besides, processing things is always personal. So at the end of the day, who's to really say? As of late, the S4 has kind of been the daily, which is honestly a welcome change given how long it actually took us to go from stock brakes to the upgraded set, which ended up being quite a rabbit hole. And I wouldn't go so far as to say that we're completely out of it. More like we're just starting to climb up. We were able to fix the stripped caliper, but we couldn't exactly go out and test it just yet. The pads we have on the car need roughly 150 miles of normal, easy driving before we can really step on them. And that all has to do with the fact that the pads have a top layer which helps them bed into the rotor pretty much all by themselves. You can manually bed them in after this process, but the first step is really to just get the miles on the car. Wear down that top layer. You wouldn't believe how tempting it is to just test them out now. Time spent saving up for the kit and even more spent installing it. I mean, I'm half tempted to slam on them right this second. Patience is difficult, but I don't think that would be for the best. Actually, I know that wouldn't be for the best. These brakes still have an issue. Even though we've bled them with a the power bleeder multiple times, they're still extremely squishy. Like there's still air trapped in the system, or like there's a mechanical issue hidden somewhere. It could even be part of the pad's break-in process. The car does stop after all. There's just a bit of play before it really starts. I don't know where we'll end up, but with a bit of research, I found a place to start. It looks like when you bleed brakes on this car, you need to use software to bleed the ABS system as well. So I guess I ought to buy a new tool that's been long new. This is a diagnostic cable for VCDS, and this is something I could have used a long time ago. As far as a hobbyist working on German cars, this is kind of the diagnostic holy grail. It can talk to effectively any system your car has, and because of that utility, it's worth a pretty penny. Though with the cars I currently have, and the ones I plan to get, for me, I think it'll be more than worth it, even if it was an expense I've been on the fence about for a while. There's one other thing about this scanner that makes it a little bit different than most OBD2 scanners. Since the software is driven on your computer and it gives you access to many things unavailable in cheaper scanners, there is a pretty big learning curve. So if I really want to get good at using it, I'll need to play around with it. And trying to bleed the ABS pump seems like a good opportunity. Meaning the car has to go back in the air and all the wheels need to come back off.
To learn the software, the first thing I'll need to do is actually acquire the software. From what I can tell, the license I paid for is built into the scanner itself. So once I get it downloaded, we'll plug it in and see what happens. The cable and software updated for what felt like forever, but eventually I was greeted with the home screen to VCDS, and I was finally able to plug the dongle into the car. The way this software is priced is actually per car that you use it on, so you can't really go diagnosing cars willy-nilly, you need to plan for the ones that you're going to regularly work on, which works well for me because right now only two of my cars work with it, but there's plenty of room to grow. I spent a good amount of time familiarizing myself with the layout of the software itself, and then I started honing in on what I actually needed it for today. There's an auto scan that scans quite literally everything, but you can also talk to each individual module one at a time. And the one I needed to talk to was, of course, ABS. And once the software is actually logged into that computer, it doesn't really get any less confusing, at least if you've never seen it before. Each one of these submenus houses a wealth of information that, quite frankly, is going to take time to learn and understand. My goal was to find somewhere where I could manually turn on the ABS pump. I read a couple different ways that I could do this online, and I was really just hoping one of them would work. From online, plan A was to go into the basic settings and search the groups for the specific controller for the pump itself. That way I could manually turn on each wheel and bleed it again. But the groups that were listed online were definitely wrong. Or there was a permission issue. I'm not sure. But they all popped up with errors. So I had to move on to plan B. There's an output test which also manually activates it's the ABS. It goes wheel by wheel, priming the pump, and tests to make sure that it works for all of them. And it walks you through what to do step by step. The consensus I read online was that if we do this output test a number of times, it'll pressurize the system and the pump and force any bubbles trapped in the ABS lines to the calipers themselves. Then afterwards, you can pressure bleed the system again, and hopefully the bubbles will come out. Then again, at this point, it's all old forum information. So the only way to see if it'll work is to actually try it. And honestly, I think it might. I did the test a number of times and each time I heard the pump prime and when ABS was actually actuating I absolutely felt it behind the pedal building pressure. So we might actually be onto something. At least I really hope so. But at the very worst if this doesn't work, since we have the software now, we're in no rush to figure out how to fix it. The car already runs and drives, so anything we do will ideally only make it better, which is kind of a cool way to look at it. After running the output test a number of times, I was a little curious if that did anything. So I started the car and pressed on the brakes. Surprisingly, they did feel completely different than before. I don't really know how to describe it. It still feels like there's air in the lines, but it feels like it moved. I won't know if that's a placebo until I bleed the brakes again. And when I finally bled the brakes, I was ecstatic. I don't know if this is all the bubbles, but these definitely weren't here before we cycled the ABS system. I went around to every caliper, and each and every one had at least a small bubble in it, two of which had big streams like the one in the back. Like I said though, I'm not sure this is all the bubbles in the system, but just like before, the calipers at the moment are bleeding clear. So I think this is a big enough difference that we should go test it and see if we're on the right track.
I got the car back on the ground and quickly realized that we had made an improvement. I wouldn't say the pedal is as firm as the TT, but I would say that we got rid of about half the play. They feel direct, which is something they never did on the old brakes. And while I could try immediately bleeding it again, I think we need to rule out the pads. After all, any time I've swapped pads on any other of my cars, the pedal has always been squishy until they've been bedded in. So I'm hoping that's the other half of our problem. And really, right now it's just a waiting game, which is a lot easier said than done. I've got a hundred miles on this car where enjoying it is the work. Thinking about it and reflecting is the work. I'm forced to be patient. And being patient is honestly easier said than done in a world that convinces you it's not important. A world with instant gratification at the forefront. A world that tells you to never slow down. And if you have any free time for introspection, you're just doing it wrong. It's honestly a hard pitfall to avoid. I mean, look at where I'm at. I've got a number of big things right around the corner. And they're things that should excite me, should worry me. I should feel something, but it's almost like I don't. It's like the past couple weeks while they've been starting, I've been so busy I haven't had time to feel anything. Complete and apathetic indifference. And as much as modern society pushes always being busy, with this as the final result, maybe it's not all it's cracked up to be. Well, it looks like the time for waiting is finally up. Meaning, according to the manufacturer, unless you're doing track use, these brakes are bed in. Though, I'd like to make sure they're done right, and even though this S4 is absolutely not a track car, I think I'm going to bed them in like they would be. And as far as bedding in brakes goes, the EBC Yellow Stuff pads have quite the procedure. Well, there's actually two, one of which requires 16 plus stops at over 80 miles an hour, which isn't exactly feasible on public roads. Thankfully, the second option is quite a bit easier. You need to drive between 40 and 50 miles an hour and then press the brakes to about 30% while holding the accelerator. You wanna maintain the speed and effectively drag the brakes for a quarter mile. It felt wrong to do, but it's exactly what the EBC website suggested. So here we are. And after repeating this process for the second time on the second day, all I could think about was comparing how this car stopped now to how it did before. Before swapping these brakes, this car always felt like it should stop better than it was. It had pads and rotors, but really, you could hardly tell that they were performance oriented. It was the sketchiest of all of my cars to stop, and that includes the classic BMW. So now, after we've done all this work to fully upgrade the braking system, I wonder if it's any better. It looks like the S4 went from my car, which stops the slowest, to stopping the fastest. They are night and day better, and bedding the pads in absolutely helped in getting them to feel better. I still have a hunch that there might be one or two bubbles left in the system, but in all honesty, the pedal feels better than it did before we even swapped the brakes, so I really can't complain. Plus, we had an excuse to order VCDS, which is only going to become more and more helpful as I learn to use it. And the weirdest part about a project as big as the S4 brakes is how much time I was given to sit back and reflect. And it's a little strange to say you're grateful for time to do that, but I really am. Patience is difficult when the world never slows down. When you're waiting for something, you have time to think, time to process life, those moments that are big and small. And that is difficult. Thinking is difficult. But without it, you're not forming opinions or emotions on anything that's happening around you or to you. You're just there, indifferent, watching it happen. And this exact emotion is what lies at the end of making yourself so busy you have no time to think. It's a life without balance, and for some reason, a lot of people glorify it. That doesn't mean it's right though. Life is gonna be different for every single person. There's no right or wrong here, but for me, I know one thing is true. I'd rather not sit back and let my life go by with indifference. I'd like to experience every single bit of it. And if I can, enjoy it. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, consider dropping a like and subscribing for more. That's the best way you can help support me and my content. Either way, I'll see you guys in the next episode. Thank you again. Have a wonderful day.